Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome for this, our Sunday school hour. Uh, not the minute, not the moment, but actually the Sunday school hour. We're glad to have you here. And it, it is not even a 30-minute Sunday school hour. It is, uh, it is the full thing today. We're grateful to have you here. Uh, for those of you that are watching online, this is going to be the final regular Sunday School Hour broadcast because we are finishing up the Book of Corinthians and because of uh, re relaxation of state restrictions, um, people can come to church now. And so anyway, so children's Sunday School broadcast, adult Sunday School broadcast, they are being suspended after this Sunday. Um, however, we will uh, broadcast the Christmas program coming up on the 20th. During the Sunday School Hour, we will broadcast that. So we're going to turn to number 345 in your songbook. Number 345 in your songbooks. What a friend we have in Jesus. And so let's stand as we sing together. <clears throat> and he indeed is a friend to us. Let's sing together. What a friend we have in Jesus. Paul our sins and graves to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. To the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we and heavy laden, cumbered with the load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Okay, you may be seated. Turn to number 233. 233 in your songbooks. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, and this is the message of Christmas. It starts with Christmas. It starts with Jesus coming to earth, being born as a baby. Very important to understand, it, Jesus is not a created being. Jesus has always existed, but he came uh, to be born in the form of a baby as a preparation for the perfect, holy, sinless sacrifice for your salvation. 233, let's sing this chorus together. <clears throat> for God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree from sin to set me free. <clears throat> Some days coming back what glory that will be wonderful is love to me let's sing that one again for god so loved the world he gave his only son 
to die on Calvary's tree, from sin to set me free. Someday he's coming back, what glory that will be. Wonderful is love to me. Amen. Some of you sang it like his love was wonderful, and some of you sang it like you'd just been given a boatload of half rotten lemons. So just kind of hard to wake you up and get you back to normal. But anyway, I'm glad to have you here today. Okay, right at this time, Brother Glenn, uh, I said, Brother Glenn, it's, it's a two-page worksheet. Relax, you've got this. It's easy. And so he's coming up to do that. Teens, we are dismissed to go downstairs to class right now. Oh, also, next week, adult teen class will be combined. It'll be in the fellowship hall tomorrow because there is a Christmas program rehearsal in the Sunday school hour up here. Just letting you know that. And the minions leave the building. Well, leave the, the, the room. All right. Please turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Father, I pray you bless this lesson. Father, that your word will go to our hearts, Father, and, and lead us in the path of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And it turns out to be three whole pages. But I'm allowed to talk more slowly. So listen, listen slowly. Turn the dial down on the speed. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. And it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that you may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timotheus come, see that, you may, that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with, ch with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanias, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints that ye submit yourselves unto such, and to every one that helpeth with us and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanias and Fortunus and Achaeus, for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another with a holy kiss. The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. How the communication ends is, in, is as important as it begins. When cards are received... Many are being passed out in these last couple of weeks. The recipient often looks at two things, the quality of the card and how, is it, how it is signed. 
How many of you flip over the back and look to see what company made the card? No one does that? Really? No one does that? Really? Oh, you check the price. Okay. Paul, Paul is now signing off. What is said at the end takes on great importance in this book. So lesson number 30, final words on generosity, opportunity, commitment, and charity. In verses 1 through 3, there are instructions to be generous. A great need, a multi-church offering. The saints in Jerusalem were starving due to persecution and possibly a couple of earthquakes that had been in the area at that time. The churches in Macedonia were taking up a mass offering for them. Number two, prepared in advance, no last minute offerings. Paul wanted the offering to be of a free will offering. So advanced planning took away any pressure that might exist. A last minute offering puts pressure on individuals to give out of obligation, not out of generosity. When you, it's like someone walking up to you and putting your arm up behind your back and says, put money in the plate. When I was in that church down in Mississippi, the deaconesses took up the offering. The deaconesses were in three-piece suit, men's suits, pinstripes. They looked like mafia dons, every single last one of them. Okay? But when they bent over and leaned over to hand that plate over, you saw the big revolver under their armpit. These were ladies. We gave an offering. The brother that came with me was sitting next to me and he's going, Maybe we're going to have to run. I says, you see the de male deacons? They'd gone to the door of the auditorium. And they'd hooked their belts in the door latches and were holding the door shut. We were going to give an offering. Okay, it's not like that. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, not one that's right. under duress. <clears throat> Number three, pick an emissary or a delegation in verse three. It would appear each church was sending at least one representative with the offering. Each would have written approval from the congregation. Letter B, the three opportune individuals in verses 4 through 12, the delegation can accompany Paul if he goes, or they would go with Paul. Paul is interested in going with the delegation, but it is apparent that he is unsure whether he will make the trip. Letter B, Paul is currently in Macedonia and hopes to see the church on a later trip through Macedonia. <clears throat> Paul is currently in Macedonia at the city of Ephesus, which is on the uh, eastern or the western coast of Turkey on the lower half. The, the, I visited there twice, and it's a very beautiful city. But if you go out to the... Uh, well, at Izmir, anyway. And if you went to Ephesus, there are guided tours through the ruins of the city. <clears throat> he wants to spend an extended period of time with the church at, in Corinth, perhaps through the winter, but t the timing is not yet right. Letter C. For now, he needs to stay in Ephesus for two reasons. Number one, an effective open door for ministry is available. It is a critical time of ministry in Ephesus, a time of salvation, growth, and progress. You know when God is plainly at work, you do not want the momentum to cease. Number two, lots of opposition there. You also know when a church is under attack. Paul discusses this later with the elders of Ephesus. He warned them of wolves in the flock. He probably even knew them by name. Number two, in verses 10 through 11, treat him well. He is doing the same work as Paul, because we're dealing with Timothy. Paul had a great concern about the treatment of Timothy by this church. 
He did not want him treated like a second-class minister. Letter B. Do not despise him having a poor treatment or attitude towards a servant of God. Timothy had two potential challenges. First, he was half Greek and half Jewish, which might not sell, uh, uh, set well with some racist someones in the congregation. Also, he was apparently young, which may have caused the prideful, and there were a few, to look down on him. We try and not look down on our youngest members. They're young in the Lord and they're growing in grace and you would cause them to be stunted. Right, Ben? Okay, all right. Letter C, help him on his way to Paul. Paul is asking them to, prov to provide for Timothy and to make sure he had the resources to get back to Paul. Number three, Apollos in verse 12. Paul wanted him to come. Apollos had a special relationship with the church. He was left at Corinth for a time to help ground that church in the faith. This explains the hero worship that had to be dealt with at the beginning of this epistle. Letter B. Apollos said later, Neither Paul nor Apollos wanted to go to the church in Corinth right away. Perhaps they were awaiting the instructions in 1 Corinthians 3 to take root so that the church would have a more unified attitude when they came later. I heard comments. What were the comments? Did I miss something? No? Okay. Uh, letter C, final commands in verse 13 through 14. Number one, all of you watch. This idea is to stand guard in your Christian walk. The devil is always looking for an opportunity to destroy your walk in Christ. Number two, stand in the faith. The resurrection doctrine in the previous chapter certainly gave those in the church strength to know what they were standing for. The gospel is not a light thing for the Christian. It is everything in our lives. Number three, act like men, be strong. This is a great command for our society where so many men have become almost effeminate in their attitude. In effect, it is saying, buck up soldier, be a man. Number, number four, do everything with love. When I pick on Benjamin, it's with love. Yeah, okay. A reminder of, in this disjointed ministry, unconditional love is a great healer and a great unifier. It can get a church through a lot of problems. Page number three. Am I going too fast? I'm looking up there. I can't see it. Letter D, a final plea in verses 15 through 16. There are those who have given themselves to the ministry. These are the kind of people where you see them serving other believers. You hardly see them doing anything for themselves. Ministry is not a part of their lives. It is their life. Number two, submit to their leadership. Simply said, if they ask for help, help them. If they are that committed to God, you can be confident in following them as God will steer them right. Letter E. The final greetings in verses 17 through verse 22, 21, I should say. Number one, three Christian brothers. Letter A, they helped me. Paul is calling attention to three very special brothers in Christ. They greatly encouraged him. Letter B, helped you. Paul reminds the church that these same men had also greatly encouraged the church as well. Letter C, hold them in high regard. Paul is trying to tell the church who to hold in high esteem and respect. Not those who like a certain preacher or claims to have a revelation, but those who actually lift up the saints of God in their spirit. Number two, the churches greet you, especially Aquila and Priscilla. Aquila and Priscilla were currently in Ephesus, 
but they were well known to the church down in Corinth. This married couple was instrumental in the salvation of Paulos some years er earlier. Number three, all the believers greet you. Don't forget to greet each other. Obviously, greet obviously greeting times were different in Bible times. This would be the traditional Italian Greek kiss on each cheek. For those of you who have, who have other ideas, the pastor just puts three dots. Okay? When I go to a certain church in the Portland Metroplex area, and I was warned by several people to expect it. Uh, uh, my other father-in-law uh, is very free with his, his Christian greeting to me. And he, he warned me in advance, and I completely forgot about it. And then all of a sudden, he grabbed me by the neck and gave me a kiss on the cheek. And you want to know something? It meant a lot to me. Because he did it out of Christian love. Not with superfluity of naughtiness, not with any I, uh, other things, but it just meant a lot. And thanks for the warning anyway. But, mm -mm. He, but he ran away when he did it. He, wasn't ex he didn't know how I'd react. And there were a lot of witnesses who saw it happen. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's see here. So he had other ideas. Uh, letter F, a final warning in verses 22 through 24. Number one, avoid those who do not love Christ. Anathema is a very strong term, meaning don't communicate, or these people are a curse to you. The Bible makes clear that you should choose your relationships with care. As said in the last chapter, evil communications corrupt good manners. Number two, Christ's grace, a common sign-off for Paul. Number three, Paul's love, not a common sign for Paul, the only time in all his letters he signs off with the word love. Next week's lesson will be in the fellowship hall. And any questions, anything anybody missed? The last word was love. It's in parentheses. It's in pastor's notes that are not on the lesson. Oh, you meant the word love in number three. Oh, okay. It's, it's love. Oh, oh okay. All righty. No, nobody else? Take off my bifocal. Mark is awake.